Brooklyn, my boy. Thank you very much for attending and welcome to our home. The uh, topic this week on my thoughts. Uh, this week on my thoughts, I'd like to examine as to why God chose to present Noah with a rainbow as a sign that he would never again destroy this world with a flood. But before we proceed, let us first analyze exactly what a rainbow is. Now, Wikipedia defines a rainbow as a multicolored arc made by light striking, striking water droplets. The most familiar type of rainbow is produced when sunlight strikes raindrops in front of a viewer at a precise angle of 42 degrees. Again, 42 degrees. Rainbows can also be viewed around fog, sea spray, or waterfalls. A rainbow in reality is an optical illusion. It does not actually exist in a specific spot in the sky. The appearance of a rainbow depends on where you're standing and where the sun or any other source of light is shining. The sun or other sources of light are usually behind the person seeing the rainbow. Rainbows are a result of the refraction and reflection of light. Both refraction and reflection are phenomena that involve a change in waves direction. Now rainbows are actually full circles based on the fact that each person's horizon is a little different. No one, no one actually sees a full rainbow. Each person has a different anti-solar point. Each person has a different horizon. A rainbow appears as a spectrum of light, a band of familiar colors that include red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. White light is how our eyes perceive all the colors of the rainbow mixed together. Sunlight appears as white. So the question we have to ask is, why did God choose a rainbow as the sign that he would never again destroy his world with a flood? Hill states that a rainbow is composed of many colors, shades, and hues. They all unite together to form one single whole. This serves as an illusion for us that people, groups, and even nations should all live in harmony and peace together. You know, our sages tell us that the rainbow is a sign of the spiritual decline of the generation. It serves as a sort of wake-up call from God that this generation has sinned, a reminder that mankind needs to improve their actions. The Abarbanel states that the rainbow did not exist until after the flood. That was when the special conditions needed for its appearance were then realized. On the other hand, the Abarbanel states that the rainbow was one of the ten things created at the twilight of creation, at the end of the sixth day, as it states in Pirkei Avos, chapter 5, Mishnah 6. This is much like the ram that was brought up as a sacrifice in lieu of Yitzchak at the Akeda, or the mouth of Bilaam's donkey, who spoke to him. This event is recorded in the portion of Bullock. There it states that when Bilaam was on his way to curse the Jewish nation, he was threatened by an angel on the road. Somehow, his donkey was able to see the angel with the drawn sword, and yet, Bilaam did not. Now, even though all ten of these phenomena were created at the twilight of creation, just before the Shabbat entered, they did not enter the world until they were needed. Nonetheless, somehow we see that they were still connected to the six days of creation. From these ten things that God created at the twilight of creation, we learn some important lessons. God did not waste even a moment in the creation of this world. He continued to create up until the last seconds of the sixth day. We also need to follow his example and use time rather than waste it. In addition, God did not wait to create things as they were needed. He was proactive. He foresaw what would be needed in the future and he created them in the present. We should learn from his example. You know, we can't always wait for a need to exist before we prepare. By that time, it may already be too late. The rainbow was given to the world as a sign of justice and mercy. It reminds us of the sins of mankind and the punishment they receive for those transgressions. It also serves as a reminder that God promised never to destroy all of mankind again. Originally, God gave complete bechida, freedom of choice, 
which allowed mankind to, the possibility to even destroy the world through their evil thoughts and actions. However, after the flood, God acknowledged man's frailty, and he therefore took that choice away from mankind. He was shown me could no states, that this is alluded to by the sign of the rainbow, which is perceived as only a half circle, not complete. Now, the Ramban states that from our vantage point, we see the rainbow as facing upwards towards heaven and not downwards towards the earth. This serves to remind us, pardon me, it serves as a reminder to God, so to speak, that he promised that he would never destroy the earth again with the flood. Well, this raises an interesting question. The Talmud that tracted his Shabbat states that God made a condition with the world at the beginning of creation that if the nation of Israel would accept the Torah at Mount Sinai, then good. However, if the children of Israel were to refuse to accept the Torah, then the whole world would then revert back to tohu vavohu, emptiness and void. So the question we have to ask is, how can God make the statement to the Jewish nation standing at Mount Sinai? After all, he already stated that he would never destroy the earth again. So the Tolus Yitzchak answers that the rainbow itself is an allusion to this fact. The Torah is a compilation of Mikra, the written Torah, Mishnah, the first of the oral Torah, and the Gemara, a compilation of commentary written on the Mishnah. When the sages referred to the written Torah, it states, Hikara B'Torah, it is read in the Torah. When referring to the Mishnah, it states, Shanu HaChomim, it is written in the Mishnah. And when referring to the Talmud, it states, Tana Rabbana, our sages, our rabbis learn. If you were to take the first letter of these three verses, you have a kuf, a shin, and a tuf. Together they spell out the Hebrew word, keshet, rainbow. This then is an illusion that as long as there are those who learn keshets, the written in oral Torah, then God says, then I will remember my Brit, my covenant with them, and I will not destroy the world again. Again, the power of the Torah. The Torah states in verse 911 that God says he makes a covenant that he will never again destroy all of mankind nor the earth with a flood. God then states in, in the next verse that this promise will exist Lodorot Olam for, for perpetual generations. So Rashi Commenting on this verse states that the Hebrew word dorot, generations, is spelled defectively without the Hebrew letter vav. He explains that there existed special generations that did not require a token of this covenant, since they were perfectly righteous. As was the case with generation of Chizkiah Melech Yehuda, it was Chizkiah the king of Judah, and also the generation of the Rashbi, of Shimon Bar Yechai. The Hebrew word for rainbow, Keshet, is similar to the Hebrew word kasha, which translates as difficult or hard. Just as it is difficult for a human being to bring up their children, what we refer to as sar gitl banim, the pain associated with bringing up children, so too does God our Father agonize over the sins that we commit. It is many times kasha, difficult for him to bear. As I mentioned earlier in this thought, quoting from Wikipedia, the most familiar type of rainbow is produced when sunlight strikes raindrops in front of a viewer at a precise angle of 42 degrees. Well, 42 is a very special gematria number in Torah. Our sages tell us that the world was created with the 42 letter name of God Almighty. It is also the gematria, the numerical number of the Hebrew word bum, in them. It is spelled base, with a gematria of two, and mem with a gematria of 40. Together they equal 42. The letter Bez is the first letter found in the written Torah, in Bereshit. It says in the beginning, and the letter Mem is the first letter written in the oral Torah, in the first mission in the tractate of Barachot. The Mishnah begins with the words, Me'emosai, from what time did the priest enter to say the Shema Yisrael? When we recite the words in the Shema Yisrael, Vishinantam Levanecha B'dibar Tabam, when you re-teach them to your children and you speak in them, 
This alludes to both the written and oral Torah. The only way for us to overcome all the challenges that we face daily in our lives is to connect to the bum, the Torah, our instruction manual, that which is given to us by God Almighty, our benevolent Father in Heaven. The rainbow should act as a, so to speak, wake-up call to help us to realize that we all need to improve. We need to do better. In addition, the Holy Baal Shem Tov said that the Jews in the desert made 42 stops on their travels to the Promised Land. In the Sedra of Masay, in the last portion of the Book of Amidbar, Moshe reviews all of their travels. The Holy Baal Shem Tov taught that each and every person in their lifetime will experience 42 events, challenges that they will be forced to overcome. These situations are alluded to by the word bum, with an a numerical value, a gematri of 42, which we say every day in the Shema Yisrael. The lesson that we learn is that these 42 challenges that we face will be what defines our life and who we are. So v'shinam t'levanecha, when you, we talk to our children, what we tell them is about is about these 42 challenges that define our life and how we manage to navigate them with the help of God Almighty, our Father in Heaven. This is much like the Jewish nation that traveled through the desert for 40 years. In reality, the Torah only discusses the first 14 months and then the last year of their travels. But what about the other 38 years? They were inconsequential, in that the nation just did exactly what was expected from them, nothing out of the ordinary. You know, we learn very little from our daily routines. When we are faced with situations that are out of the norm, that is when we are challenged. That is when we realize just how much we have grown, and at other times, hmm, just how much we still need to grow. Since the rainbow, rainbow is an indication of many transgressions that we have committed, we need to break the cycle of sinning. As it states in Pirkei Avot 4.2, Ben Azai said, Avera gorera tavera, that one sin brings on another sin. So our sages authored a prayer that, are we, that we are required to recite whenever we see a rainbow. They did so in the hope that we can break the cycle of sin that many times dictates our lives and begin a new cycle of mitzvot, good deeds. Since it also stays in Perkyobot, in the same Mishnah, the mitzvah go rarita mitzvah. The one good deed brings on another good deed. So when we see a rainbow, we can hopefully begin our journey of repentance by performing a mitzvah. We do so by, our, do so by articulating a blessing to God our Father in heaven. It will hopefully inspire us to follow a positive and more godly direction in our lives. The Hebrew word keshet, rainbow, and the Hebrew word kasha, difficult, are related. They both teach us a great lesson in life. There are six colors found in the rainbow. The beauty of the rainbow is the fact that all these six colors are separate, yet at the same time they come together to create something better and more beautiful than their individual colors would allow. I think that this is God's message to us, that though there, are, there may exist individual beauty, it pales in comparison to the harmonious blending of colors that the rainbow creates. Bringing about this harmony is not easy, it's kasha. That may be why we only are able to view the rainbow, the keshet, as a half circle, not a whole. Attaining perfection in our lives, alluded to by the whole circle, is very difficult. However, if we want true beauty to exist in our lives, we must persevere. We can never give up. Who knows? Who knows what we may be able to accomplish? And with that, let us hope and pray that we succeed in ushering in the coming of Mashiach Sukkana quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you very much for attending. Again, God should bless you, should have safety and health and success in all that you do. Shabbat Shalom. Again, thank you again.